Good evening there, everybody. What is happening? Hopefully you all are having a wonderful day today. So when it comes down to it, I thought that I would do this short little video that I thought would be very particularly interesting. And this is going to be a video about the most recent upset in that of the boxing year between that of Sebastian Fondora and his most recent opponent. And for those of you that did not end up hearing the news or did not see the fight, Sebastian Fondora did suffer his first defeat and not only not only did he end up losing this fight but he got completely cold cocked in this fight he got completely knocked out and i'll actually state this i actually did not personally know uh, that this fight really was happening until i believe about yesterday and i actually was not even personally able to witness the fight but the reason why i recently heard the news was because of certain videos and certain little clips and highlights that i had just recently seen and I recently figured, or I recently figured out that Fandora had actually lost this fight, I believe by knockout within that of the seventh round. And the reason why I wanted to talk about this, especially because of the topics that I've been talking about lately, especially that of the David Benavidez topic. And a lot of the times I've made comparisons between that of David Benavidez and Sebastian Fandora, because in my view, they have somewhat of a similar style. Now, what I will say is this, David Benavides, in my view, he is more skilled than what a Sebastian Fundora is, probably by a decent amount. I think that he's more skilled. I think that he's going to be more skilled than what Sebastian Fundora ever is going to be. I think that David Benavides probably has more power for his size. I think that he has higher boxing IQ. I think that he has better boxing ability. And I think all in all that more than likely he's just going to be more successful in his career. But the reason why I bring this up is because Sebastian Fondora and David Benavidez, they somewhat have that main pressure bully fighter type of style of that Antonio Margarito, George Foreman, Deontay Wilder, Mike Tyson type of mold to where basically once that style or once the intimidation factor gets thrown out the window and the fighter realizes that they can compete with that type of style and compete with their tempo and compete with their level of power, this is usually what ends up happening to those type of fighters. Now, the big question is, will the same thing happen in David Benavidez? We'll see. Because I don't think that David Benavidez, you know, I don't think that he's as flawed as a fighter, per se, as what a Sebastian Fundora is. But like I said, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens to David Benavidez when he gets in those fights with Canelo, Demetrius, Andre, possibly Jamal Charlo. In my view, he's going to beat Demetrius, Andre, and Jamal Charlo uh, without at least a great amount of issues. But Canelo and Demetri Bivol and Artur B2B, those are going to be the real interesting fights. And the reason why I bring this up once again is because of this. I believe that I was having a debate with a gentleman probably about a week ago. And we were talking about the Canelo Alvarez versus David Benavidez potential fight. And I said the reason why I have Canelo Alvarez above David Benavidez or the reason why I said that he was a better fighter because he disagreed. He said that it was too early to say if Canelo's a better fighter. And I don't think that it was too early at all. I thought that Canelo, with his results and, of course, with his skill set, that he clearly is above that of a David Benavidez. And he said, well, who cares if it looks pretty, uh, you know, as long as it gets the job done. And there's been a lot of people who have said that about certain fighters in the past. The Antonio Margarito fans said that about him in the past before he ended up losing to Shane Mosley. Dante's Boxing Nation, who we're about to review, said that with Deontay Wilder until he lost to Tyson Fury. George Foreman fans said the same thing about George Foreman before he lost to Muhammad Ali. And I'm sure Sebastian Fondora fans said the same thing before he ended up losing this fight tonight. But once again, I don't think David Benavidez is as flawed as a fighter as Sebastian Fondora. But once again, a lot of the times when these type of fighters with that pressure bully type of style... You know, usually because they don't have a great amount of other dimensions other than that type of pressure style to really wear on you with their size and their level of power. Mike Tyson was also another one of these fighters as well, even for how highly technical and skilled he actually was. You know, like I said, it's going to be very interesting to see what David Benavides can do. But anyways, we're going to see what Dante's boxing nation has to say. Let's get into it. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? So there were a lot of fights on different networks that aired tonight. And there's been a couple times where we've gotten all these fights and there was at least one upset. Well, the upset this Saturday was Brian Mendoza knocking out Sebastian Fendura. 
He knocks him out in the seventh round. Man, talk about bringing someone down to size. Mendoza chopped down the tallest. And the reason, at least from what I've seen, at least from the knockout clip, is because Sebastian Fondora, once again, a lot of the times he does not move his head when he needs to. There are certain times where he tries to set up a punch, especially with his lead hand, which is a very good thing. But because he tries to fight on the inside, when it comes down to it, and he has such long arms, sometimes with those shorter fighters, he have to be careful because they're on the inside and they have the advantage with the shorter arms because sometimes it's going to take a little bit longer for your punches to get there. And, you know, in a little bit of a similar fashion, there was another fight that actually ended up like this because his hands were not up in the correct situation and he ended up getting hit with a punch as well in a fight that he probably should have won tonight, although it was the main event of the UFC card, the Izzy Adesanya, the Israel Adesanya versus Alex Pieta fight. He had Israel Adesanya hurt and I thought that he was winning the second round and he had him in a very bad position. But because he had Israel Adesanya up against the cage, he had him in a very troubling position and he had his hands completely down and his head did not move when it came down to it. Israel Adesanya was able to hit him with a counter and he was able to knock him out. And it was pretty much the same thing here. So you always have to try to keep your hands up. You have to be very aware of the distance and incoming counters. Tree in the junior middleweight division, standing six foot five, six foot six. <laughs> Brian Mendoza, who has two losses on his record, he started off the fight pretty good. He was using angles, he was boxing. He wasn't really getting hit with a lot of stupid punches. It actually looked to me like Mendoza was already on the verge of pulling off the upset, at least in the first two rounds. But then there was a shift in the third or the fourth round where Sebastian Fendura, he gained control of the fight. He started to apply a lot of pressure. <laughs> God damn, look at that punch. Throwing combinations, landing a lot of punches, and landing his favorite punch, which is his uppercut. He was giving Mendoza a lot of problems with that uppercut. By the seventh round, it looked like it was only a matter of time. And Sebastian, he was going to get Mendoza out of there eventually. But out of nowhere, in the middle of an exchange, Brian Mendoza, he lands a perfect left hook that Fandora never seen. Fandora's knees completely buckled. And then Mendoza, for good measure, he caught him with two more punches. And Fandora came crumbling down. He couldn't even move his feet. He tried to move his upper body. But he didn't even try to move his legs to get up. He was completely out. So this is a huge win for Mendoza. He gets two knockout wins back to back. He knocked out Jason Rosario. Now he knocks out Sebastian Fendura. This is also another big win for the Cuban trainer, Salas, who's getting a lot of big wins in boxing right now. He's mainly known for training Udenis Ugas, but he also trains uh, Robisi Ramirez, who just won a title last weekend. So this is another huge win for Team Salas. Mendoza actually took this fight on short notice, just like he did when he fought Jason Rosario. Now he becomes another one of Jamel Charlo's mandatories. Now, while this is the best news for Mendoza, there's no doubt about it. Sebastian Fendura would have been a much bigger fight against Jamel Charlo, the champion, the undisputed champion, Jamel Charlo. In fact, even if Jamel didn't fight him... I, I agree with that, but this is also a big part of the reason why I say that I don't really know how a lot of people can really buy uh, this narrative that 154 is really one of the deepest divisions in boxing. I mean, you're talking about Jamel Charlo and Brian Gastano, and those are really the only debatable 2A great fighters there. I mean, some people may, 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 may debate Tim Zhu, and I'm not really even sold on him completely being an A-grade level fighter, but maybe him. But, like, who else is really there? Erickson Lubin, like Jason Rosario, uh, like, like, who else is really there? Like, no one else really there is competitive enough to really be an A-grade level fighter. And I'm not, you know, uh, you know, I'm not degrading anyone for that. But that's why I say when people a lot of the time say Jamel Charles is a top five power pound fighter, like, nah, sorry. Like, <laughs> it just is what it is. First of all, he only has one a great win in his career. And on top of that, he lost to a guy that was known for getting knocked out in every big fight in his career just a couple years ago. <laughs> you know, so it is what it is. Just the way that I look at it. I was even looking forward to maybe Errol Spencer, Terrence Crawford after they fight against each other, which I believe they will next. I was even hoping that one... When you talk about certain fighters like that of an Errol Spence Jr. especially, I don't think Sebastian Fondora would have a real chance against that of an Errol Spence Jr. or a Jamel Charlo. 
he might have a chance over someone like a Terrence Bud Crawford, even though his power is still translatable, more than likely to 154, because Terrence has a lesser chin than that of an Earl Spence Jr. or that of a Jamel Charlo. But he would not be able to beat Earl Spence Jr. or Jamel Charlo, because they have a chin that could possibly withstand his power. And on top of that, uh, Sebastian Fondora, even though he has, you know, very decent power, he doesn't have that A-plus punching power. You know, it just is what it is. Um, you know, and for some of these fighters, in order for them to be the most successful, they usually have to be transcendent athletes like Mike Tyson, George Foreman, David Benavidez type of athletes or Margarita, where, of course, you have some, you know, tainted with your hand wraps. So it is what it is. And Sebastian Fondora, I don't know if he's quite on their level. It just is what it is. But once again, it's going to be very interesting. I'd like to see a rematch between these two because I believe Fondora might be able to pull off the victory to see how well he can handle that. But, you know, like I've said in the past, sometimes that's not always the best decision to make. Sometimes you got to reflect on your loss. So we'll see. Then would move up to 154 and maybe Sebastian Fedora would be their first challenge at the new weight class. But that's clearly not going to be the case anymore. And Mendoza, even though he was good enough to knock out Fedora, I don't see him doing too well against Jamel Charlo. But who knows? He I don't know much about Mendoza, so I would have to take a look at him. Especially since I hear that he knocked out Jason Rosario and now Sebastian Fondora. Um, but more than likely, I don't think he's going to do very well either. Uh, you know, I don't know. He just doesn't come across to me as any deeper than a journeyman fighter. But we'll see what happens. We'll see. Because some fighters, depending on the coach and the training, uh, they can turn their fights around. For those of you that remember Marcos Maidana, Marcos Maidana for a time was looked at as somewhat of a journeyman fighter. Probably, you know, a little bit above a journeyman fighter always. But... You know, his biggest win uh, before he ended up beating Adrian Broner was Victor Ortiz. And Adrian Broner, of course, is a B-grade fighter anyway, in my opinion. But Marcos Maidana was able to completely turn his career around once he got with Robert Garcia. Uh, then, of course, he ended up getting the fights with Floyd Mayer the Jr. And ended up giving Floyd Mayer the Jr. two of the toughest fights in his career. So who knows? You never you never know what's going to happen. We'll see. But anyways, uh, let's, let's play the video out. Let's see what Dante has the rest to say. And that'll be pretty much about it. He's pulling off upsets. We just have to see. But that's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one. One of the most... But anyways, that was pretty much about it. I thought that was very particularly interesting. The second decent upset this year, at least from my perspective. Uh, Sebastian Fondor versus this guy. And of course, there was also Liam Williams, I believe, versus Chris Eubank Jr. Um, two, <laughs> two fights that uh, the losers probably should have ended up winning. But because of certain flaws that they had in their style... Um, you know, they ended up getting not only beaten, but stopped. So very interesting how sometimes combat sports works out. But that's pretty much about it for today. Just thought that I would talk about that really quick. I'll have to watch the fight personally. If anyone wants me to break it down a little bit further, certainly let me know. And I might possibly be able to do that. Hopefully, I'll be able to watch the fight tomorrow. But we'll see what happens. Anyways, that's really about it. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll talk to you all later.